Jake with the Dialed Cycling Lab. I'm Lance, your favorite mustache with the Dialed Cycling Lab. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the Garmin versus Wahoo debacle that you and I have been perplexed with for quite some time <laughs> Very now. Very much so, yes. I'm a longtime Garmin user. I've been using Garmin, I think I went back and looked, I think it's been 13 years. I had the Garmin Edge 305. It looked like a giant brick that you put on your handlebars. <laughs> I started using that thing way back in the day and I've been using a Garmin ever since and I've probably gone through just about every iteration of uh, Edge device that they've had since. I think I'm probably pretty similar. I've probably used Garmin devices for a decade. Yep. So, But anyhow, uh, they came on I'm like, oh great, there's competition for Garmin to maybe have a better unit. And when they first came on, um, I really wasn't intrigued by them. It wasn't something that I even thought about because I was so enthralled with the Garmin ecosystem sure. and all the great things and accessories you could attach to it. But um, over the course of time, we've had a bunch of friends and teammates who have started using the Element series, and I've been getting a lot of good feedback from yep. them. For me personally, the main reason why I didn't switch over them or even try them is because when I ride on the road, I absolutely positively need to ride with the Garmin Varia radar. With the radar. Yeah, we'll yes. link that. We did a little review on that. We did. And uh, you can go check that out. But uh, for the longest time, I didn't I didn't even want to consider it because I felt like I was riding outside naked without it. And to have this handy unit, it wasn't going to work. Right. Well, guess what? It works now. They, they updated the firmware yep. was about a year or some change ago, and now it works with it. And as soon as that happened and they came out with the Rome, I'm like, I think I might need to check these things out. So we've been uh, trying them out. We've uh, Jake and I have both been... Uh, testing out the Rome for the last uh, couple weeks yep, or so. Well, road bikes, gravel bikes, and Lance has done some mountain biking. I haven't I have, yep. personally jumped on the mountain bike in a little while. <laughs> Need to do that. But yeah, we've been testing it out. So we wanted to give you guys our thoughts and impressions on these. Coming from a perspective of somebody who's like all nerded out on the tech stuff. We love the tech yep. stuff. A couple guys that have been on Garmin units for a long time. And if you're in a situation where you've been on Garmin and maybe you're thinking about going to the Wahoo, Maybe this is something that will help you make a decision. Yep. If you're brand new to computers and you're just using them for the first time, this might help you make a decision between the two different options that are out there. I've been using this guy right here, the 530, for the last, well, ever since they came out. I think it's been almost two years now. Yep. <laughs> You set been, that up. <laughs> you said that. I've been using the 830 for uh, ever since it came out for a couple of years, which is the touchscreen version yep. of this. And uh, so I've been happy with it okay. as well. But I want to talk with the Garmin. I want to give you some of my impressions. And I think Lance has got some impressions yep. on the things that we do and we don't like about each of these respective units. And some of these things for me personally were why I wanted to jump over and try the Rome. Um, they also have the Element Bolt. Uh, we both opted to try the Rome because we wanted to have something with a little bit more feature-rich um, Correct. technology. Correct. It has a few it. more features, a little bit more yep. built into it. Yep. So what are some of the things that you don't like about the 830, Lance? I use the touchscreen version, and the touchscreen can be tricky with muddy, rainy, wet things. Sweaty. Sweaty things. This guy sweats a lot. I sweat a lot, and it's matter every time I every time I get out of the saddle and I'm pumping really hard, my sweat drips onto the screen and sometimes it changes things on the screen. They've improved the screen quite a bit, but it's still... We did a team ride last night. It started issues. raining a little bit and people that were running that device were like, yep, there it goes again. It's just not, not working. There's a very easy way to turn off the touch screen. You just touch the power button and it turns off the touch screen, which I do for every race, actually. Yep. So that you can still swap fields with the touchscreen turned off, but it doesn't mess with things. In the winter months here in the Pacific Northwest, we're always riding with gloves on. You have to have the right kind of gloves that have a special thing built onto the finger, sewn into the finger for correct. that touchscreen to work though, correct? And if it's dry, I'm licking my glove all the time to make <laughs> sure. That... And so for me personally, the reason why I chose the 530 was 100% because I didn't want to deal with the screens changing on it. And because I just wanted a button that I could push with my gloves on. Didn't want to think about it, hit a button and have it do what I wanted it to yep. do. That was why I went with this over this guy. But I still have had some quirky little issues with this guy here. Every time, it seems like for me personally, every time Garmin puts out a firmware update, which seems like it's all the time, thanks Garmin. <laughs> right. Uh, it will upload and it will do the craziest things to my unit. Like it will either completely brick on me, it will cause me to have to go into a factory reset, or sometimes it adds a bunch of pages to the, the, the profiles that you, the pages that you can scroll yeah. through. Um, it will sometimes actually go in there and it might just be one field on my main screen and I'm the guy that has all 10 fields up on, that's the max that you can put on this, 
all 10 fields will be up on it and it will just change one thing in there. So I'll go from like normalized power to the next thing I see my, my direction heading tell me that I'm going northwest. I'm like, I don't want that. No, I have to dig back in there and it's pushing a lot of buttons to get back in there to change that and go back out. And it's just a hassle. And usually you don't notice it until you're on your ride. Right. So you got to deal with it throughout the whole ride unless you are planning a workout. Right. Then you know that you need to do that. You got to stop and take the time to switch that. To me, that's a hassle. I haven't had the firmware updates that Jake has had, but I have had connectivity issues with the with the app. That happens the, too. The app um, that comes with the that that goes with the Garmin, it it covers a lot of ground. There's a lot of yes. fitness information in there. It's quite extensive, but th quite often there's connectivity issues with downloading. So that happens. I have to. Delete, yeah. not delete the app, but like close close out the app on my iPhone and then reopen it back up. Sometimes you're actually yeah. even having to restart your phone completely. Yes, I, I've had, yeah. even had to delete the app, reinstall the app, re-log into the app, have yeah. it reconnect with everything just to get the thing to send the workout over so I don't have to go plug it into my computer because so that's just not what it's supposed to do. Some of the issues. Yeah, uh, another couple issues. And again, I don't know if this was just my, this is my little guy right here. I don't know if it's just my particular unit, but when you're doing the Strava live segments, I've quite often had it to be where I'll start the segment, it says you're on this segment, you get like 10, 15 seconds into the segment, all of a sudden it says lost connection with segment. Yeah, yeah. But you're, it, it still has connection with the satellites, but it loses the segment. Or another scenario I've had, I'll be wanting to go do a segment and it will never find it because it thinks the segment's a street over when it's not. So it's like the GPS on mine maybe is a little bit off. But I've had that happen actually with two of these guys because yep. I actually had one that I had to send back for a warranty replacement and both of them Same still issue. have some little issues like that. So I don't know. Have you had any issues with yours? Yes, uh, there are like issues with the Strava Live segments. I've, I've had that issue as well. Yeah. yeah. So, But aside from that, I don't want to knock Garmin because I've been using them. I love them. I think they're a fantastic device. I think it's the gold standard by which all bike computers are compared to. I had these questions that made me think, well, maybe I need to check out this guy. Maybe I need to see if, if this is a, a global thing right. with all units, or maybe it's just a Garmin thing, or what? So, You know, two other issues I've had with my Garmin. The, um, the screen, which is, it, it tends to be kind of glary. Look, yeah, can, you can kind of see, you can kind of see the, the glare on it. So sometimes it's, it's hard to see the screen, and it's not... Gorilla Glass, so I've scratched mine. Yep. The other issue I've had is the little battery, uh, the charging door, mine actually broke off. You can't, yeah. Mine actually broke off, and so I have to keep track of this thing. I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose gonna this happen. eventually, yeah. but I haven't lost it yet. I've tried really careful not to lose that thing because it, it ripped off. So Yeah, another thing that sometimes you'll have a problem with, um, a lot of guys and, and gals out there riding bikes are going to wear sunglasses, and a lot of sunglasses are polarized sunglasses. And hard to see. For whatever this, reason, yeah. the polarized sunglass with this particular uh, glass that they use or plastic, whatever, it can make it a little bit difficult to read True. sometimes. You kind of get this rainbowing effect on there. It's just kind of hard. You have to get over it and, and really pay attention to how you're looking True. at it. So do you have the same issues with the Wahoo? Not at all. Gotcha. No. Okay, so moving on, let's go ahead and take a look at the Wahoo Element Roam. Let's start with some of the uh, the pros of the Wahoo. What is it that you like about that, Lance? Well, it was super easy to set up. the The app you there's a there's a an app that comes with it, or that you use in connection with this, and it made it really easy to set up. Yeah, at first I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. I, why can't it all be on the the, the yeah. little computer, the bike computer itself? And then immediately it says. Um, use this, your camera, to scan the QR code on it, and it's yeah. like, bing, and it they were connected. connected immediately. E immediately, I'm like, yeah. oh, that was easy. Um, e e after using this for the last month or so, I've had, like, no connectivity issues. Yeah. Between this and my phone and the app, and, and uh, is the, it, just, it just works. So, remember that team ride I was talking about we did last night, Lance? Yes. Yeah. All right, so we're on that, and every single segment that I had starred on the Strava Live segments came up and worked flawlessly and there's about three of them on there that every single time I use my Garmin, it drops them. Yeah, they don't come up right. It, it actually, the nice thing about the Wahoo Strava Live segments, the screen is actually more usable. It, it gives more usable information yep. and you can change that on the Garmin, but it, it's already 
built in to, exactly. to Wahoo. You can customize both of them, but this one's just a cleaner user interface, I think, with the ability and the ease to, to make that look and feel the way that you want to. Not only that, if you do a live segment on the Garmin, once you complete the live segment, you can see what your result is for like 15 seconds. And it goes away. And then it goes done. away. Yep. You don't see it until you end your ride again. Yep. With this, there's a whole page that shows you what you did that, that whatever started live segment that you had done, it'll show you during the ride if you want to look at it. You again. can stop if you're halfway through your ride and regrouping, you can scroll back and see how you did. You know, that's just for us junkies out there that like to chase yes. segments to, to get the workout. But you know, for all intents and purposes, that's still fun and it's good information to have. Yeah. Okay, so the next part would be workouts. Now, in full disclosure, I have not uploaded a workout to mine yet, but Mr. Lance over here has. I've done several. Um, the workout page for the Wahoo is also excellent. It's very intuitive. It was easy to, you know, hit my power targets and to see what I was supposed to be doing and how long the, the interval was supposed to last. Um, uh, Garmin's is excellent as well, but I, it's kind of a wash. They're both about the same. Yeah. They're both equally good. Both equally so. good. Then we get back into the two options. The Garmin has the 530s a touch smaller than the 830 screen size wise. And then you've got the Wahoo, it's just a touch bigger, and I think it just hits that sweet spot. It's good, if the screen's good, it's easy to see. That screen does something though that the Garmin doesn't do that I quite like. There's an up-down button on the side of the Wahoo, and when you've got your, your screen up, you can simply push an up or down button. You've got items one through 10, all right? And whatever the lowest items are on your totem pole, as you, you basically zoom in, those things fall off, but the yep. screen gets bigger. So if you've got a hard time seeing or you don't want the distraction or you whatever, you can just push the button, and the next thing you know, you've only got up to like one thing on the screen, Correct. or two, or three, or yep. four. So every time you hit the button, it gets the the text gets bigger, and the it, the the number of things that you look at on the screen gets um, fewer. It's the same thing for the map page. If you uh, want to zoom in on the map, you just hit the up or down buttons, uh, and you will zoom into the map or yeah. zoom back out. Yeah. So, so that part is fantastic. Yeah. And I also want to go back just to the the user interface and the way that these actually work. If you want to change anything on your Garmin mid ride, it's really not easy at all. You have to really dig in there, and when you even getting into the setup, setting that up, it's it's quite difficult and quite different. It's easier on the touch screen than it is on the button screen. The button screen, correct. Yep. The button screen, I equate that to back when we used to have our flip phones. Is that a word, button screen? A I button just screen. made up a word, button screen. <laughs> when we had our flip phones, and then we're sending a text, and you're using the QWERTY, and you're having to push a, a button like three times to get a certain letter. You're just kind of having to, to push a bunch of stuff. That's kind of like setting up the Garmin versus the Wahoo. It's more like a smartphone where you just yeah. you, you push, and you do stuff on the smartphone, and it just happens instantly, too. So um, there's that. When you're actually in ride and there's a prompt and you need to turn it off or you're not quite sure, it's got three buttons at the bottom and yep. you've got the, the buttons on the side as well, but you've got just a simple thing right there. Do you want to turn this on or off? Yes. Do you want to forget this device? Yes. Do you want to follow this this route? Yes. Yep. No. And it's just, just a simple button. You just simply buttons. push it and it's very easy. Very easy. It's, a, it's a nice user interface. So. That's one of the perks or the, the bonuses that I like about the Wahoo, again, significantly more than the, the Garmin. If you're doing a route, you uh, the Wahoo actually, if you get a, a route update, like which you're, you've got a turn coming up, it comes up as a little banner across the bottom of the screen. On the Garmin, it actually takes over the entire, whatever screen you're actually on, it just takes over completely. And on, for mine, you have to touch it to get it to go away. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it it's simpler on the Wahoo. Now, when it goes to a whole brand new screen, if you're following a route or maybe chasing a segment, yeah, you, that whole thing goes away. You don't have that data. You're all of a sudden just paying attention to a map, which for safety's sake, that might be a good thing. But yeah. if you can kind of kill two birds with one stone and have it all on one screen, that just makes more sense to me. Yeah. So the routes are the routes are good. The uh, memory on the Wahoo it comes with 2.4 gigabytes of memory, which seems like a lot until you compare it to the Garmin, which comes with 16 gigabytes of memory. So this has way more memory in it. 2.4 gigabytes is is probably plenty, but this came preloaded with with uh, maps for most of the world, but not detailed maps for all of the world. If you want detailed maps, you have to update certain maps. Um, in order to do that, I had to delete several countries I wasn't gonna go to so I could get more detailed maps of, of Oregon and Washington and Idaho and Utah, places that I ride frequently. frequently. Yep. So I had to delete but 
many things to pretty get simple enough. process though correct? it was simple you just, just use, use the, the app. phone app and yeah. that app just works so well with that you push something and it just happens on there like that yes so, made it easy so yeah we don't necessarily maybe wahoo needs to rethink loading everything on there just like kind of a once over but just let you know hey you have the option to upload all the stuff right yeah that was counterintuitive the 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 maps are more detailed and tend to be better on the garmin Okay. Garmin, Garmin is very well known for their mapping systems in their GPS devices, and so their maps are just, their maps are better. Um, the routing seems to be better on the Garmin than it is on the Wahoo, but it's, it's good enough. Yeah, it works, yeah. it suffices. So I give, uh, give Garmin a point for the, the mapping, so yeah. good. <laughs> I'm getting a phone call right now. Uh, John Berman is trying to call me. I'm not going to answer his phone because I'm in the middle of filming a video. But this is, th you can hear, this is coming from the Wahoo. It's a little beeping. It's a, like a ringtone. Yeah. And your Garmin but is set up to do I the same thing. Your Garmin is set up it. to do the same thing. Is it turned on right now? It is it is turned on. And it's not ringing. It's not ringing. That's another problem. Yeah. That happens quite often with my Garmin as well. I'm supposed to get text messages. I'm supposed to see phone calls. I'm supposed to get notifications. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, hit or miss. Does it want to work? Uh, depends on the day. It depends on what kind of move my Garmin's in. So it doesn't always work. And that's just a... It's not super important, but there are some days where like you might be expecting a phone call or if something's wrong at home or somebody needs to get a hold of you for some reason, you should be able to see that pop up in your head unit when you have it set up. And Correct. if it's not going to work and you can't rely on it, it's just it's it's a useless feature in my opinion. The Wahoo, every single time I've used it, it just works. Text message comes through, phone calls come through, it just works. One thing that the uh, Garmin comes with is Climb Pro. If you know what Climb Pro is, um, if you're doing a certain route, it shows you how long the climb is, how steep the section is, it color codes the segments. It's a very useful feature that I'm quite familiar with and I like using because if you're doing a race or doing a ride, you know exactly how long the climb is. Wahoo does not come with, they don't have something similar. No, and it seems to me that that would be a simple firmware thing. You would and think so, yeah. I don't so, think yeah. that is, is Climb Pro something that's proprietary to Garmin and they have a, a patent on it and you're not allowed to use it, but it seems like it'd be something pretty easy to put into the software. That's really nice to have. When you're doing a race or if you're doing a long ride or route yep. or something like that, it's really nice to know how long the, li the, the climb is so that you can pace yourself accordingly. So Wahoo does have a climbing page Correct. that does show the, the your elevation at the bottom of the screen. It shows the gradient. So you can kind of see, but it doesn't give you, on the, on the Garmin it says you have 0.7 miles left to the top of this climb. And this doesn't say that, you're just kind of guessing. Wahoo, get on that. Yeah, fix that. <laughs> All right, let's get into some battery life. The claimed battery life on the Wahoo is 17 hours? They claim 17 hours. For the Wahoo Roam. For the Garmin, for the 830, where are you at on yours? Yeah, I, I don't know. It'll go a week before I need to charge it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long, long battery life. That's, on paper, looks like it's pretty close. Put into practical reality, it's a pretty big difference. The Wahoo's closer to what like 10 hours it's, yeah it's closer to 10 hours and this this way the garmin way beats the wahoo on battery life yeah so. i've only had a couple rides i've done that have been in that that length that duration of time and that would be a real bummer to have it die at the end of that knowing that i can count on my garmin all day that would be fantastic ah, most rides though two, three, four hours, yeah. you're fine i usually charge all my devices so for me it's not a big sticking point but if somebody's out bike packing or it's doing bike something packing. long long rides or That's something using gps and a route that they're following that needs good battery life the gps routing takes more battery life so it it eats up the battery a little bit more correct and even garmin um they have a external battery pack that you can put on these things um you've got the the bottom of that you can see the little little shiny things the you little can actually nodes on there yeah. And you can extend the battery life even more. So that would be something that I would give a point to Garmin to. Or you just plug in a battery pack and you, can and do you that tape too. it to your handlebar. Yeah, but that's just another <laughs> thing that you got to bring. But it you know, just depends on who you are and what you're doing. Yep. Um, for me, it's not a big deal. It's not a deal breaker by any means at all. But for some people, that could be um, a, something to consider. Correct. So. One thing that I have used quite frequently on the Garmin is the lap banner. I have mine set up where every mile it shows me how fast I went, what my average power was, what my average heart rate was. And I've kind of gotten used to seeing that every single lap. Um, on the 
Wahoo, they, they have a lap page that you can set up that shows all the same things, but it doesn't pop up as a banner. On my Garmin, every lap, it pops up for like 15 seconds and I can see how that lap was gone. I have to switch pages to see it on the Wahoo, which I didn't like. I like it better on the Garmin. Gotcha. One of the things that the Garmin does is it uh, automatically syncs up with trail forks. So I found that for mountain biking, that the Garmin has way better metrics and routing ability because it automatically updates trail forks. The Wahoo does not do that. Um, with trail forks, it's like the whole world's mountain bike um, trails are already in here. So if I'm mountain biking somewhere, um, it will show me the name of the trail that I'm on and what's coming up. And it, I found it very simple to mountain bike with this. Gotcha. Um, this will show the, the route you're on, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't, you just don't get the same information that you get from trail forks that's automatically yeah. synced with this. And if we're missing something here on anything that we've talked about, yeah. throw it in comments. Uh, we're still somewhat new to the whole Wahoo ecosystem. And if there's something that we're missing, uh, let us know and, and share that with everybody. All right, let's get into one more important thing, which might be a driving thing for a lot of people, the cost, the price, the breakdown on, on how much your uh, wallet is gonna lose. Yeah, they're not cheap. They're not. The MSRP for the <laughs> Edge 530 is gonna be $300. For the 830, you're looking at $400. And it's 400 bucks. For the Wahoo Element Roam, you're looking at $380. Yeah. So the 830, this guy right here is probably going to be more comparable to this. This guy is probably going to be more comparable to this guy's little brother, which is the Wahoo Element Bolt, Bolt. Yep. which comes in at 230 if I'm not mistaken. So when you start to look at the par comparison uh, on price between the comparable units, uh, the Wahoo is going to be a little less expensive. Yeah. So, Jake, which one are you picking? Oh, man, you're going to put me on the spot. <laughs> um uh, you know, I've been thinking about this and I've been going back and forth and I've been kind of trying to weigh the two out. I still want to ride with them both a little bit more, but if I had to pick right now, I'm going with the Wahoo. Ooh, that surprises yeah. me. It surprised me too. I was not expecting that at, at all. I've been using the garment stuff for so long and I've just gotten used to the quirk so much that I think I've been... I don't know, just like, oh, here we go again, another little Garmin quirk, it just is what it is. And I, I honestly thought that between the two, that it was gonna be a lot of the same issues. I, I really did. I thought there was gonna be like connectivity issues with uh, satellites. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be uh, the same kind of convoluted setup and, and, and user interface, but it was gonna give me the information and the data I wanted. I connected to this guy and immediately it made sense to me that this guy is doing a lot of stuff that this guy isn't. Yeah. And it was just a lot easier to use. Um, so yeah, I mean, I do have some hangups with this, but I'll get into that in a second. Which one are you gonna use, Lance? Well, I'm really torn because um, for all the mountain biking stuff I do, the Garmin just seems to work better for sure. me. So, and I like the Trail Forks integration a lot. But for the road, there's, I cannot, the only fault is it doesn't have Climb Pro, and you don't use that all the time. Climb so, Pro and Trail Forks seem like two very simple things yeah. for a firmware update to address and some simple integrations to put into their, their unit. You really can't go wrong. I mean, if you're buying a computer for the first time and you start with Wahoo, it you're going to love it. If you start with Garmin, you're going to love it. Yep. They're both super good. They're pretty even. I'll use this for the road and I'll use this on the mountain until yeah. they fix this uh, well, one. Well, this one works really well for gravel too. Um, it I does. Just, I, there's just a lot of little upsides to this guy. It's like if you were to say like, this is a Mac, this is a PC. I mean, it's they, they both do the job really well yeah. for the most part. <laughs> um, you know, in, in comparison, there's just little nuances about the two that, that are different. But for me, it just works really well. I do want to see a Wahoo do a little bit more with respect to listening and putting information out there. They seem to come out with stuff and it usually works extremely well yeah. out of the box, but sometimes getting some updates from them would be nice to have it a little bit sooner. Hopefully, maybe they'll see this and they'll uh, they'll add a couple of those little there things you go. for you, which would be pretty <laughs> nice. Whereas Garmin, Garmin, slow down with your updates. They update all the time. <laughs> maybe do a little less frequently and, and cover more things and make it so that you're not causing issues for your end user. I, it can't be just me because I've heard other people talk about that. And you hear people talking about how they won't do an update 
they'll like stay a whole update cycle behind. So they'll come out with a yeah. new update and they'll know that it's okay to go on to the last one that they did because they want to <laughs> let somebody else experience all the bugs. Right. And that's 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 truth, that, that happens, so. Yeah. All right, well, if we missed anything, um, again, throw those up in comments. We definitely want to hear them. If there's some stuff up there that uh, makes a lot of sense, maybe we'll do another video on these things and we'll, we'll compare and contrast. If there's another unit that you want us to compare it to, yeah, that'd be we'll great. Be open, to, open to doing that. Yeah. Enough rambling on here. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.